Hi, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. I'll get started with an interesting question. Okay. Say we have a bifurcating blood vessel, blood vessel that branches into two. Okay. And the velocity in the this branch V1 is higher than the velocity at this branch V2. Given that, and now let's consider a say spherical red blood cell. Okay. Is this RBC likely to take this path or is it likely to take this path? Try to answer that question. I will answer that question using a very simple model by the end of this video. The model that I am going to use is known as the Bernoulli equation. Okay. The objective of this video is to discuss this particular equation, Bernoulli equation and apply it to three specific cardiovascular problems. Okay. Specifically, I will talk about aortic stenosis, then deceleration at iliac bifurcation and then pressure flow calculations at a coronary stenosis. Okay. Towards the end, I will discuss some open problems in say FFR. I will answer this question and I will also give the references that were used to make this video. Okay. With that, I will get started with the Bernoulli equation. Bernoulli equation is a statement of conservation of energy. Okay. Works under certain conditions. Like the flow is nice, it is laminar, there is no energy loss due to viscous forces. Similarly, the flow, the flowing fluid is also incompressible, it cannot change its volume. Let us consider a flow field in a circular tube with varying cross section. Okay. Let us consider, consider a point P which has a velocity P1. If we follow the streamline of this particular point, say we went, end up in this point with a velocity V2. The pressure at this point is P1 and let us say this point is at a height H1 from a, from a chosen datum and the area of cross section corresponding to this point is A1 and the diameter at this cross section is D1. D1. Similarly, pressure at this point is P2, it is at a height H2 from the chosen datum and, and this cross section has a area A2 and diameter T2. Having said that, the Bernoulli equation says, okay, pressure at the point 1 plus half rho v1 square, half rho velocity square plus rho g h, okay, rho is the density of fluid, g is acceleration due to gravity, that is a constant. Because it is a constant, if we were to estimate this term, at this point we will end up with P2 plus half rho V2 square plus rho G H2. I will briefly say what this equation is. If you have to multiply it with delta V, P1 minus P2 times delta V is the work done in the system. Okay. Half rho V2 square minus half rho V1 square times delta V is the change in kinetic energy. Rho G H2 minus rho G H1 times delta V it is a change in potential energy. Essentially it says work done, the work we put into the system is equal to change in internal energy plus change in potential energy. Okay. With that, whenever we apply the Bernoulli equation in a cylindrical tube, another equation comes very handy which has to do with conservation of mass. Say the tube is rigid, total flow that enters here should be the total flow that comes out of here because there is no volume accumulation here and the fluid itself cannot change volume because of that whatever enters here should be that which comes out of here. So the flow that enters here should be velocity times A1. That should also be equal to the flow that exits here which should be velocity times A2. Essentially, we have a relationship between Essentially, due to conservation of mass, we have a relationship between V1, A1 there and V2, A2 here. Okay. With this, let us now apply this Bernoulli equation in specific cardiovascular problems. Okay. So, let us consider the left ventricle with the aorta, okay. left ventricle of the heart with the aorta. Many times, okay, the area of the valve here which is known as the aortic valve 
it's it's of clinical significance and we want to be able to measure that okay now we are going to apply bernoulli's equation to measure what this area is going to be and this is a hard problem okay unless you have some extremely good quality imaging system okay because this valve is dynamic getting a good estimate of its area is going to be hard okay here we will discuss a very simple model for estimating its area okay so essentially i have a enlarged view of what happens here say this is a lv with let's say the pressure inside it is pv at a point and velocity is bv if you follow the streamline near the wall its pressure is going to be ps and vs okay the objective is to find what this area here is okay find as if you write bernoulli equation for this particular system we have pressure hurt plus kinetic hurt plus potential hurt okay that should be equal to ps the pressure kinetic and potential hurts at this point okay because the heart is pretty small whenever we apply bernoulli equation say within our organ most organs the potential hurt is going to be negligible okay and we want things in terms of the areas so let's replace velocities by areas we know how to do that velocity is nothing but flow over the area okay similarly let me replace velocity in this side flow over area okay so now we notice if we rewrite these terms we get okay we get this essentially change in pressure should be equal to this term and usually the stenotic area is very very small compared to say the cross sectional area of the lv so this term here is negligible okay what we are left with is this from this we can find the stenotic area if we can estimate the flow q we know the breadth density rho and the pressure gradient delta p okay we can estimate flow using say doppler ultrasound okay how do we estimate the pressure gradient across the wall we can insert a pressure catheter try to measure the pressure at this point and then enter the lv and measure the pressure so using a combination of say doppler ultrasound to measure flow and a pressure catheter we can estimate what stenosed aortic area is okay so that's the first application of the bernoulli principle now let's look at a different application concerning the aorta here here is a second example okay again let's look at an aorta and first thing where do you think are the most critical regions in a aorta okay say this for a bulb okay we blow it up increase the pressure which of these points are likely to fail in an aorta think about it there are commonly about four to five modes of failure in the, within the aorta one of the critical regions is this arch over here because the blood takes a turn there so the forces in these walls are pretty high similarly when the blood bifurcates and flows into two vessels at the iliac artery okay again the forces in this region are usually very high similarly say someone has any issues with the kidneys due to that the forces in this region could rise up okay. let's keep those details aside for the time being and the question that we are going to address is this let's say we know the pressure here okay 18 kilopascals which is 135 mm hg we also know the velocity at this point say 1 meter per second square sorry 1 meter per second okay. let's follow the streamline corresponding to that streamlines are essentially direction of velocities in the flow field okay when you follow the streamline there is one particular streamline where things streamlines to the left of it left or right of it whichever way we want to call it 
they end up in this branch of the iliac artery okay streamlines in this side end up in the say in the left side of the iliac artery that is the case there is this one streamline where it will go end up in the wall essentially the velocity of this streamline at this point is zero okay so given that the question is find the pressure at this point okay so we know try by now anything to do with velocities and pressure we have to use the bernoulli equation p1 plus half rho v1 square equal to p2 plus half rho v2 square what are some information we know okay v2 is zero okay so let's remove this and from this let's calculate p2 based on the values we have this term i think will be like 0.5 kilopascals and uh, this of course is 18 so by this bernoulli approximation what we get is about 18.5 kilopascals essentially this corresponds to about uh, i think approximately 3.7 mm hg increase in pressure so as blood flows the pressure from here to here is going to slightly increase at this stage are you all happy with this calculation okay we are engineers we want to check things if things are fine whether the approximation is fine and all that we need to check one thing the aorta is not like other organs aorta is pretty small this distance say it's usually like 30 cm given that we need to go check if neglecting this term makes sense for this problem so let's calculate the change in potential here okay so rho g h1 minus h2 let's go calculate this we have rho let's say g is let's say it's 10 if you use 30 cm here what i get for rho g is 3 kilopascals which makes if you were to apply this correction here our p2 okay will be 21.5 kilopascals okay and this number is pretty high compared to this term this is close to 22.5 mm hg so a couple of things for the aorta if you are to look from say the top of the arch to the bifurcation here the iliac bifurcation it's not a good idea to neglect the potential head first thing and we notice as blood flows from here to this point there is actually a pretty there is a considerable increase in pressure from this point to this point okay in fact this is close to 161.3 mm hg so we started with 135 and we ended up with 161 okay so this is getting towards the high bp range so given that that's one simple explanation for why this region here would bulge and fail say in case of aortic abdominal aortic aneurysms of course there are multiple factors playing all over but the simple bernoulli calculation says pressure in this region is going to be really high so the the blood vessel is likely to inflate or fail at this region one of the modes of failures okay before we go to the next application let's slightly rephrase this question now that we raise this aneurysm abdominal aneurysm let's say we know the diameter at this point okay aorta let's say 25 mm okay let's say we also know the diameter at this point let's say 50 mm now as an assignment i suggest you try this given p1 b1 t1 and then 
d2 b2 okay find p2 even aneurysm what we did is what happens in a normal aorta let's say there is a change in diameter and given this information most of it are over here okay you can calculate b2 from conservation of mass go find what p2 should be okay and again try to see the effect of adding this potential head and neglecting it what i am going to do is to look at a diameter change problem but not an expansion but a constriction that's called a stenosis now let's look at the coronary arteries start from the root of the aorta okay and let's look at one of the arteries so let's say a lady and there is a blockage in the artery okay there is a stenosis in the artery this is enlarged and shown here so there is a stenosis in the blood vessel where there is a decrease in diameter the region before the stenosis is known as proximal part the region after the stenosis is known as distal part okay what we know is the pressure at the proximal part okay is 13.3 kilopascals you also know the velocity here which is 0.5 meter per second and the diameter here which is 6 mm we are also given the diameter of the stenosis which is 3 mm the question is find the pressure at the stenosis okay so by now whenever we got things with things to do with pressure and velocity we know we have to use a bernoulli equation and because this is a very very small segment we can ne neglect the potential heads so let's go ahead and write the bernoulli equation and try see if we can find the pressure okay if we write the bernoulli equation we have everything in terms of pressure and velocities okay but we do not know b2 if we know b2 we can find p2 will be the only unknown is there a fine way to find b2 yes we know v1 and the geometry velocity and the geometry are later so essentially v1 a1 is v2 a2 let's try to convert that into diameters and see how v1 and v2 are related so a1 is pi d1 square by 4 a2 is pi d2 square by 4 okay so let's remove the common terms essentially velocities are related by ratio of square of diameters okay so let's try to replace v2 square using this expression okay so this implies v2 square is v1 square d1 over d2 power 4 so let's plug in this here and try to rewrite this we'll get okay rewriting this i have this term now we have enough information to find what the pressure p2 is okay so what i have here is 13.3 minus 1.10 which is ln 0.4 kilo pascals okay so the value of pressure to us ln 0.4 kilo pascals in general if you were to neglect say the potential heads okay your rise in velocity would mean your drop in pressure okay this holds good in general as far as this term doesn't affect the results okay with this let's go back and answer the original question that we posed before i do that one more thing given this pressure say the proximal pressure we found the pressure at the stenosis but the real variable of interest is the pressure here at the distal region okay because the ratio of pressure at the distal region over pressure at the proximal region is closely related to what is known as fractional flow reserve and this quantity is of enormous clinical and research interest for those who are curious i have shared some references for this as well as some references that i used to make this video in the description below 
and with that I will go answer the question that I post initially. So velocity at the left branch is higher than the velocity at the right branch ok. So when you know V1 is greater than V2 by now we know pressure in this blood vessel is going to be less than pressure in this blood vessel ok. Now given this if you look at the RPC and the pressure distribution across its surface ok it is going to be really high at the top because we have a high pressure gradient that is driving the blood flow ok. There will be a minor asymmetry between pressure in this direction ok will be slightly less than net pressure in this direction because P1 here is lesser the resistance to flow because of this pressure is going to be slightly lesser in this direction compared to resistance to flow in this direction given higher P2 there. Because of this minor asymmetry ok the RPC is likely to take this branch that has a higher velocity ok. In fact one could go and make calculations on what happens to the shear force instead of the normal forces which are pressure even the shear force calculations would suggest it is going to take the branch with the higher velocity and this picture also turns out to be the cover page of one of my favorite books on biomechanics by Professor Y C Fun. Now if you look at the book I think you could recognize its significance ok. So with that I will conclude.